All right, we'll uh, we'll get started. It's a little after twelve thirty here. We have Lawal Ugwak and Jackson Mitchell with us today. If uh, anybody has a question, just raise your virtual hand, and um, we'll be happy to answer any questions you have. And then Lou Spanos is going to join us after after these guys. So Sean, go ahead. Hey guys, so we're now kind of a week into spring ball. Uh, I just want to get your impressions on how the team has looked and, and how it's felt to be, uh, you know, back out there uh, really practicing for the first time in a while. Um, I'd say that uh, it's been good to be back. It's been a year since we started, uh, since we, we've left football. So I guess as a defense, we've been very excited to, to finally be out there and, and, and create our physical and uh, dominant um, uh, nature because that's one thing that we really focused on is trying to be as physical and as dominating as possible. Yeah, I think it's been good. And uh, I think also one of our biggest improvements so far since we had so much time was that uh, we really understand the playbook a lot more. Even a week mm -hmm. into spring ball, you can see that like compared to where we were, a lot more people understand the playbook. We have a lot more depth, stuff like that. Yeah, definitely. Last week, uh... Ian Swenson and Omar Fort kind of said the same thing about creating a more a more physical defense, a more aggressive defense. Can you just kind of talk about how you've you've gone about turning this defense into more physical defense? Like it's kind of the steps you guys have taken to to make that a thing. Um, as a D line, I would say that we're really focusing on stopping the run, and uh, and uh, obviously getting pressure on the quarterback. I feel like that's something that we improved in a lot more since my freshman year. And throughout the years that I've been here, so stopping the run is is one thing that's that's really going to help us be that dominating force and that dominating dominating defense that we need to be. Uh, I think it also started in the weight room. We've had a lot more time to be in the weight room. A lot of guys got stronger, bigger, faster, mm -hmm. so that just makes it easier when we're coming downhill, play faster, and then we can come down and make some hits. Anybody else have any questions for these guys? I'll just keep going. I mean, what what has yeah. has your guys' impression been on been of the offense so far? I know it's only been a week, but what have you seen on that side of the ball from your vantage point, your perspective? Uh, one thing I'll say about our offense is in the last year, they've definitely um, in, they've definitely had their own um, their own improvements uh, trying to enforce the run. And uh, one thing that that, we, that they really like doing, that uh, that it, it creates that kind of a physical nature on both sides of the ball that we really need. I feel like that's really going to help us once we get into the season. Just knowing that we could go 100% on offense, they can go 100% on us, and we could just continue to grow off of that uh, that uh, um, the strength between each other, just continuing to grow. I think also uh, they have a lot of playmakers on the offense side of the ball. There are a lot of guys that can take off, take the top off the defense, but they can also come downhill and run the ball. You got a lot of running backs, stuff like that. Matt Shonovsky, go ahead. Uh, this question is for Jackson. Um, you you played in 2019 as a true freshman. Um, how have you developed individually during that time? Much more comfortable at the college level, particularly with the, an additional year off. Uh, just talk about uh, that what that's allowed to, you to do in terms of transitioning from, from high school to college and now um, on the football field? Yeah, I think playing as a freshman is difficult at times because your body's not always developed enough to be playing against, you know, you're playing against guys that could be 22, 23 years old as an 18 year old. So it's kind of tough at times. So I think this time off really gave me a chance to get bigger, stronger, to take on those offense linemen, things like that. But I also, Compared to where I was as a freshman, I completely understand the defense way better now. So I'm able to stand in the middle and make calls, make checks, call things out as the play develops. Awesome. Thank you. Mike Crispino. Hey, guys, how anxious are you to see you know, the fruits of all your labor here this last year, unable to play any games and working hard in the weight room and all that. And now you get into spring practice. How anxious are you, do you think, as a group to really see what results you can get after having so much time off from playing real games? 
I'd say we're we're definitely really anxious, definitely ready to play. Um, been waiting to get out there, and, and I know Jackson and, and I and the rest of the defense can't wait to go show what we've been working on. Yeah, uh, for sure. We're definitely really anxious about getting out there and also proving to everyone else, like, what we already know. We know what we can be. We know how much we've developed, but we're excited to show everyone else what, what we've been doing in this time off. And a second part to that question, with the schedule they have coming up now, a lot of different schools, you're not in a conference. Uh, do you look at it and, and get excited? Because there can be a lot of new uh, places you're going to play and new opponents coming into UConn to play against you this year. Yeah, definitely. Uh, there's there's some big games that we've marked on our calendar. I mean, every game on our calendar we've definitely marked, but I feel like there's some games that we really really think we can go out there and show that, that we're not to be uh, – played with like in the last few years and, and I'm definitely excited to go out there and play those teams. Yeah, it's definitely exciting to play against a whole bunch of different teams. It gives us a chance to show everybody that, you know, we can play all types of teams. It doesn't matter what conference, what size of the school, it doesn't matter. Matt, go ahead. Uh, this question is for the wall. Um, yeah. Being able to dominate at the line of scrimmage defensively goes a long way in terms of being able to to be a good defense. We talked to Travis already uh, so far this spring. We're talking to you today. Just the overall development of the defensive line, playing next to Travis, your development, as well as some of the other guys on the line. Can you just touch on that a little bit? Um, definitely playing playing and, and being in the weight room with Travis definitely affected, uh, I'd say, me because uh, we've been lifting partners. He's my roommate and all that. And I feel like just being around people that want to be stronger and, and just continuing to, to, like, to have that not quit mentality. And it's definitely, it's definitely spread upon our D-line. I know, I know our D-line is, uh, we've, we've taken on a completely new identity, being way more physical, being able to rush the passer, being able to stop the run and just being a whole bunch of like bad dudes. Like I'm, I'm definitely confident in, the, in the, this year's production in our entire D-line. And I'm, and I'm excited to, to, to show everybody that, that we've been really been working in the weight room, working on the field, getting a whole bunch of extra work, uh, definitely with full work and all that stuff. We, we definitely know we're doing better this year than we have any other year. How has that mentality carried over the spring ball and how's the matchup going with the offensive line? Um, it's definitely going good. Um, we're, we, we're definitely way more physical than we've been in the past. And, and you can see that there's there's – there's we uh, a jump from last year and the years before from from things little things like tearing off and making plays on the running back and or making plays on the ball carrier or or just knocking the whole line back and, and making plays on the quarterback anything like that just getting overall pressure on the quarterback getting our hands up knock down balls a whole bunch of things like that we we've, we've definitely showed so a lot of improvement thank you mm -hmm. paul doyle go ahead Hi, this question's for Jackson. Um, can you just take me through the fall and what it was like emotionally um, in terms of the adjustment and how different it was for you just personally? And how long did it take before you you kind of got into this groove, I guess, and felt comfortable without, you know, without playing games? Uh, you're talking about this past fall? This past fall, yeah, and what yeah. that was like. Yeah, I think at first it was kind of disappointing because we were, we were, at first we were uncertain about what our season was going to be like, if we were going to play, if it was going to be limited games, things like that. And then when the news broke that we weren't going to play, it was pretty disappointing because we saw as time went on that every other team was going to still continue on and play their season. But we knew we had to just trust the process and like it was the best choice for us, I think. And so we just had to change our mentality instead of, being upset and mad about that we're not playing. We had to take advantage of that time. So we all got in the weight room. We started getting bigger, faster, working with Coach King every day, pretty much. Even in our off days, we were getting it together. So I think it was disappointing at first, but it's also a good time for us to come together as a team and get uh, better. Right, thank you. Sean, go ahead. It's for Jackson, uh, kind of going off one of Matt's earlier questions, but you know, you mentioned that you've, you know, physically grown in the past year, and you mentioned also um, having this fall to learn the playbook a little better and just being able to dedicate that time to, I guess, you know, the mental side of football. How do you think that's benefited you personally, having an extra year essentially to 
you know, not just grow physically, but also grow, learn the schemes better and just, you know, spend that fall with some time to, I guess, understand this defense a little better. Yeah, I think uh, understanding the defense is a huge part of football because it slows the game down. I think as a freshman, things are moving kind of fast and it's, it's hard to see things on the fly, watch plays develop. But as you learn the defense, you're able to, you learn the concept and then you're able to apply it to multiple different offensive concept, concepts that you're going to see and multiple offense that you're going to play against. So it makes it a lot easier. It makes it easier to make plays too, because you're not, I'm not sitting there thinking as the ball snap, oh, what do I got to do now? And then what do I got to do after that? I can just go and play. Is it difficult coming in as a freshman, uh, you know, being expected to play and, 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 you know, be a big part of this defense and also adjust to playing at the college level, learning the playbook. I mean, there's probably so much going on as a freshman. Can you just walk me through what that process was like and, and kind of, I'd imagine a lot was happening at one time and it must be a little difficult to process, I suppose, in one season. Uh, yeah, I think it was definitely difficult at first coming in, you know, coming in straight into camp pretty much. And you got to throw on the pads and go against guys that have been playing for three or four years. That's definitely going to be difficult for anyone. But as time like as time goes on, you just get more experience. It makes it easier and easier. And then by the time I started like starting, I guess, which was about halfway through the season, I was able to go out there and make some plays for us, even as a freshman, because I, I had all experience there in practice. You know, I think the most important thing is even if you're on scout team or whatever, you're two or three, you got to take advantage of the reps you get during practice. That's what's going to make it easiest for you to transition into games. This question is for both of you. Um, we're going to be talking to Coach Spanos in a, in a little bit. Um, what's it like playing for a coach like Coach Spanos? Um, and how has he uh, helped you, both of you develop uh, since he's arrived? Um, I would say that Coach Spanos brings uh, like a different type of nastiness uh, to our defense. And I feel like uh, his expectations of us just make us want to go out there and, and, and go a little harder, force turnovers and, and, and do all these things because he's, we've seen his resume and we know that it's worked for him in the past. So definitely following his game plan and following the things that he's teaching us um, is definitely going to work for us as well. So I guess it's, He's he's the leader of the 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 ship on defense and and like we're 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 the crewmates we're we're all out there we're we're gonna be doing doing the best we can and playing as fast as we can getting getting the ball out making plays and and we're all we're all doing it as one. Yeah, I think also him coming from the NFL level, he sees a lot of little things that you might not see. So you know you can make a play and on film you think you're thinking that you made a good play, but he's gonna point out these little other things that you can improve on. So the next time you can make a better play or keep making more plays, I think. So he sees a lot of dip, small things that you might not see at first. And then Jackson, I want to follow on to what I asked Lawal earlier about the development of the defensive line. Uh, how has that unit helped you as a player as well? Because obviously if you have a strong defensive line in front of you, your job as a linebacker, not to say it's easy, but it gets a little easier to be able to go and make plays. So what have you seen from them uh, so far this spring? Yeah, that's definitely it's definitely uh, a big help, I think, because when you have guys like Travis and Luol in the middle, it causes the offensive line, they got to hold up. They got to make sure they got on their blocks. That way you can you kind of have more room to flow back and forth and you can shoot gaps more because they're, they're going to be worried about doubling and things like that. I think. All right, anybody else have anything before we let these guys go? All right. Thanks, guys. We made it through another availability without an F-bomb being dropped. That's good. Better than Vanda Mark did. <laughs> All right. See you guys. Thank you. Um, Thank you, guys. Lou's going to be on in 15 minutes, so I'll just leave this open and we'll hop on then. All right. <clears throat> um, thanks for joining us. Lou, why don't you just um, start us out with a quick opening statement, just talk about how, how spring ball has been going, and we'll launch into some questions. Yeah, um, it's good to be going our second week of spring spring ball. Uh, the players are still enthused. Um, the first practice, and you know, they got the jerseys. We haven't gone 
living on leaven and pads for almost a year. So it was, it's going well, it's going well. The guys got excited or, or like, you know, like to be out there and running around. Um, Anybody have um, anybody have any questions? Just raise your hand. Mike, lead us off. What's up, Mike? Hey, Lou. Yes, sir. Well, how are you as a coaching staff keeping these guys kind of in the moment? Because it is just spring practice. This is the second one in a row they've mm -hmm. gone through without playing games in between. Mm -hmm. Is that is that difficult to do? How do you do it? Uh, that's a really good question. Um, you know, since since. Um, since when we come back here for summer practice, you know, you had the uncertainty, but the kids, our head coach and the kids were focused. When I say that is like during the meetings, the virtual meetings, you have to give them credit. They're wired in, act like it's person to person. They got your notepads. You have, I mean, you have all the access of, of watching practice tapes. We have digital watch, look at the playbook. We have cards. So all this different stuff, we're, we're virtual, but yet we're not touching each other but on the screen and they're engaging and they know what the main goal is. And they just kept on looking for it, it. Keep on working hard and we'll get through this. And that's where we're at right now is, okay, we didn't play this past year. Now we're focused on spring ball. Hey, let's look at, hey, let's, let's look how the offense is attacking us. Let's see how, you know, how I get better during the individual period. Hey, how we get better during each period you know what the theme is. Could be third down, first and second down. Yeah, just to follow up to that, uh, we just talked to Lowell and Jackson, and they sounded like they were a lot more informed about what they're supposed to do as guys on defense now, just from having this extra time to kind of study this defense and, and be around you more. Do you sense that with, with players, and can you see that that might be something that will really produce results for you? Yeah, you know, uh, first and foremost, I think they're coaching me. I'm not coaching them. That's just a joke. But, no, it, it, they're awesome. Um, we have all this time. So, you know, you talk about the, you know, how the pieces to the puzzles We're we're in the past where, Hey, you have to get the players ready to go. You know, know their job and you know who, who affects their jobs. But now we got all this time to talk about, okay, this is how the offense is attacking us. And this is how we're calling this defense. And this is what each player has to do to have, to be sound and also to be effective, to create turnovers, you know, and, and get more possessions for our offense. Uh, Sean McFarland, go ahead. All right, Sean. Hello, Sean. Hey, Lou. Uh, we just talked with Jackson. He kind of said that this past, you know, fall was good for him to, you know, gain a little physical, physical strength, understand the playbook a little better, understand the schemes a little better. Just wondering what you've seen out of him, you know, this past year since last spring ball and the, you know, developments he's made after a pretty good freshman season. Yeah, uh, that's a real good. Uh, well, you guys got a lot of good questions today. This is nice, guys. It's good to see you. Hey, that's not, um, now first and foremost, how, how Jackson matured and evolved as a football player and also as a student athlete. And then the time commitment that he's doing off season training and also he's getting his leadership skills. He's being vocal, lead by example. And now we can talk where in the, in the past, he didn't understand the concepts and grasp because he was young and playing early. You know, like what I said earlier on, with Mike is you have to get him ready, but now he sees what we're talking about. And then we're at the level now where if we see a formation, I say, all right, Jackson, tell me what, what am I thinking? Oh, you got to make this check or, Hey, we got to play this. We got to key here, or here, or here. So it is, you see him evolving to a student of the game. I'd imagine the jump from freshman year to sophomore year is huge for college athletes. I'm just wondering what you think the impact this past offseason has on a guy like Jackson who, who, you know, again, played pretty well as a freshman, but I'd imagine there's a bigger leap to that sophomore year after that a year in the system. How, how big was spending a whole fall really just focus on development? How do you think that's going to impact someone like him? Yeah, hopefully, you know, you know, he, he was productive. Um, hopefully the bottom line is us winning games, us making critical stops on defense, and also him making his plays to make. So to answer that question, Sean, I'm going to answer a question with the question is hopefully we see during, um, you know, the rest of the rest of couple of weeks of spring practice and obviously during fall ball and then the season. Hopefully all this, he's doing all this stuff right in the direction to be successful, to beg our defense to be successful and him successful 
in the upcoming months. Thanks, Lou. No, thank you, Bob. Matt, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Um, what are you trying to find out about this defense uh, throughout the spring? Uh, a lot of young and inexperienced on the back end of the defense and the secondary. Just overall goals for you as a coach to figure out what your guys can do in this defense. Okay, and what we talked about earlier uh, is, um, you know, always understand our defense and also the intensity. Now we've got our full pads on is, is you know, proper leverage by, yes, you know, attacking the ball uh, at the point of attack, winning your box at the point of attack, trying, trying to push each other and no one has um, a starting job is competing. So all that with the young players is, is look at the older guys running to the ball, how to study, how to prepare, and also how we practice and keep on getting better, 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 and challenge each group to be better than the last play. And then uh, another question from my side. It seems from the outside looking in, you may disagree, but the up front seems to be the strength of the defense, of, of the defensive line. You seem to have the most experience, most depth there right now. Does that make your job, or does that allow you as a defensive coordinator to do some things differently and get more creative uh, from a coaching perspective in terms of calling plays and things of that nature? Yeah, yeah. You guys are very observant. This is, yeah. Um, you know, our, our, um, you know, our core guys, our veteran guys is D-line. You know, one time, you know, two years ago, they were young. You know, obviously now it's going on. I, I'm not smart. X, Y, Z year. So this is going on. <laughs> I'm joking, guys. <laughs> but uh, is uh, they are mature. And then that gives us some freedom to do stuff, you know, with, with, with the other pieces of the puzzle, with the other seven guys, and also with them to showcase their talents. And we can do certain stuff that they're successful through the front four when it opens up other opportunities for other players on the defense. Anybody else have anything for Lou? Sean, go ahead. Uh, the past few weeks, a lot of the guys have said they want to make this defense more physical, you know, more nasty, I guess. I, how have you seen them take those steps to becoming a more physical defense? Um, um, what we got... Ooh, someone did a oh, oh, I got a spotlight for everyone. I see that all this technology, Pat. I see what you did. Um, is um, you no know, during individual periods. Um, you know, we'll always have our short pads on now. The first couple of days you couldn't now, so we're doing drills, individual drills to get our contact ready. And then we have periods where we're thudding, where coach, you know, we have certain certain style how we thud, but also how we take at the point. How we're taking on blocks, how we're de defeating blockers, how we're breaking on the ball, how the ball carry leverage, hey, how we're gonna wrap up. So all that stuff will build, 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 build to be a physical and attacking. So we try to do each phase in, during the course of the practice to execute, to execute that, Sean. Matt. Coach, I mentioned earlier in this call that uh, your secondary seems to be a little on the inexperienced side. Uh, have you seen anybody so far through spring? I know it's early still, but that's really separating themselves and, and has made you think, wow, this guy's really put in the work and put in the effort uh, in preparation for the spring. Yeah, I know, we got, you know, a couple of players, you know, you know, corners, they're all doing a good job. You know, I, mean, I won't be specifics, but all, you know, the young guys who came in, you know, still learning, but, you know, Miles Bell's doing well, Jeremy's doing well. Then, you know, we have Stan, Cross, and Trey. They're all competing. And, you know, each day, each day, you know, each one's showing their talents. And then, you know, on the safeties, you know, we got, you know, we got the young guys. We have Diamond. You know, we got Malik. And then, you know, we got Jalen Furrow. And we got a couple other young guys, too. So, it, it, it's good. It's still too early to see, but they're showing, they're flashing. Now, the key now is being consistent, doing each practice. In some of the highlight packages that get put out, it seems Stan Cross has, has come in and um, uh, had an impact. What would you say he is not one of these newcomers? Uh, we obviously haven't been able to see practice. So what does he bring uh, from the corner position? You know, I think, you know, you know he's mature. Um, also, you know, attention to detail. Um, you know, he's winning. You know, he's, he's competing at, at, at his position on one-on-ones. You know, he's competing at the ball. Yeah, he had a nice break up the other day like on a um, on a red zone route. So yeah, he's showing up. 
Mike Crispino. Lou, do you think you're going to be able to develop here in this spring practice a kind of defense that you want to play in the fall? Is that something that you're trying to accomplish? Or are you just looking at players and personnel and talent and, and all that? And do you develop, you know, what you, your style more when you get to August? I think um, I can say that's a yes and no, meaning our identity now that we're trying to create what's going to be successful in the fall. And with the players we have, everyone's healthy. And then now we want to evolve how the offenses each week are going to, what packages they have. Now we got the core concepts. We don't understand the concepts now, how the offense is going to try to attack us. And then from there is put our, our right pieces on the field to get to get the best 11 out there to give us an opportunity. And just to follow up to that, uh, defensive backs in a given formation, et cetera, with the way the games play these days, do you do you see yourself using five and six DBs more and more often? That seems like what at yeah. least the pros are doing that now. Well, also that's where your analytics come. You know, if it's first and second down, you got a high pass, you know, 70, 80 percent passing on first and second down. Obviously you got you got to get the you got you got to get the guys that, that can run with them and cover. But also like you said, it goes hand in hand. Now we got that veteran D line. We got to put on the quarterback. If, if the offense is trying to attack us, you know, in the passing game, we got to have make sure our D lines get after them. Maybe also alert for the screens, revert all that little stuff that we're going over. That's nice to have doing during the spring. Thanks, Matt. Hey, coach. Um, you made your name known, uh, coach of linebackers, clearly over the course of your career. And in your first year here, you seem to be really undersized at that position. Just looking up and down the roster now, you, you have more prototypical linebackers. How does that help uh, in what you want to do uh, in your defense? Yeah. Um, you know, there's always there's always like a, like an old cliche word where, you know, bigger, faster, stronger, you know, that type of deal. But in today's game, you like to have a hybrid guy where, you, where, you, where they have the length as a linebacker and they can and then also they have the size where they can take on blockers, but also athletic ability and speed to cover tight ends and possible, you know, receivers. So it's nice that, you know, we're getting these type of athletes in here. And, and you know, Mike brought a good point. He's like, hey, sometimes you have four or five, six DBs, but don't forget about these linebackers. Hey, it'd be nice to have two, three of them on the field too. And it all depends on how everyone's competing, but it, it's nice to have depth at that position. And are you seeing, just hearing you talk, it seems like this defense can be versatile. Like, so if you're going off against a spread offense or a run and more running style offense, yeah, um, you can match it up in, in different ways with the personnel you have now. Yes, yes. You got to, you, you have to evolve. Um, you know, each week is, is a new week, you know, at any levels, you know, especially in collegiate level where one week, you know, you can face X amount of tight ends. Next week, it's all receivers. Then the following week, wishbone. And you got to focus on the task at hand, what's weak and how our roster is and, you know, who's healthy and try to put our best 11 out there to, uh, uh, to do our job. All right. Anybody else have anything for Lou? Oh, you raised your hand earlier. You didn't answer. You didn't ask. You raised your hand in the beginning. Oh, did I lower your hand? I see everything. I'm like these players. Hey, I see it all. <laughs> you good, Cole? I don't know. I think he's good. All right. Hey, guys. Right. Hey, hey, it's great to have interaction with you guys. I, I, I can't wait to see you guys in person. Not seriously, me. It'll be nice. I know. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. Soon. Thanks, Thanks, Lou. See you. Hey, thank Bye. you, guys. Be safe. Thanks, Thanks Lou. Bye. All right. Thanks, Pat. Bye.